30 years ago or so, I listened to a wise woman, a very concerned physician named Dr. Helen Caldicott. Yeah. And she said something, I think it was her that said it. Now, there's a couple of historians in this room. There's one person that knows a hell of a lot more than I do, Lloyd. Lloyd always knows everything about this kind of stuff. But I think it's Helen Caldicott that I heard say, uh -huh. nuclear power and nuclear energy is a future technology whose time has passed. Yeah. Um, I, I spoke last night in Pasco after I listened to a lot of people who were in favor of nuclear and in favor of the industry speak. And I listened to a lot of people who, a few people, almost a balanced number, who were very skeptical or questioning or very negative or very alarmed by it. And I felt like I learned a lot. I feel like I learned a lot more tonight. I'm glad that you let folks talk as long as they needed to talk because we are here to listen to each other. And I've learned a hell of a lot. So thanks. Thanks for not being a, you know, I know you, you're going to give me the one minute sign in a minute, but, but now I'll actually probably sit down because I don't have that much really to say that in order to get said. I was a school teacher for a long time. And one of the things that I thought I could was my mission with children and young adults was to teach them the concept of critical thinking, of taking as much information and facts and learning how to do their own research and think for themselves and not believe anybody and question authority. You're a good guy. Lots of those men that worked up and women that worked up in uh, Pasco at the, at the plant, they're good people. They're just doing what all Americans want to do, which is make a living and have a family and live happily ever after until it's our time. But we can do so much smarter things if we think in the bigger picture and if we think more critically than we have been. If we don't become dominated by large industry and small minds and greed. I guess my question is about this, to get right to the point of this thing is, as a critical thinker, I, I taught economic students about economic choices. I don't think the CIS has done that. It hasn't told us what are our economic choices, what are the bottom line costs, what are the true costs, social, environmental, health, etc. Political costs, who wins and who loses on this? I don't think the general American public wins with reprocessing. I don't think it wins with nuclear power. Environmental costs, boy, those have been made by so many of you wonderful speakers tonight and many of you have gone. My bus goes further back than the Portland bus does, but hey. Um, how much will this program and policing and monitoring of its implementation cost us? How much more energy? How many more jobs? How many more times might the economic multiplier effect go into it? reality. If this funding that you folks are proposing is invested in solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, lots of renewable and clean energy sources are out there that are not there. How much more democratic might it be when millions of us and world citizens are allowed and engaged in electrical and other energy generations that would just relatively few governments and large corporations instead are doing it. I think the economic and political gains which this proposal entails, are you flashing my money yet? Oh, you did. No, the economic and political gains are very short term. The negative consequences are huge and they're immediate and long term. 